when you have differences in a sample like we're currently seeing, there's several ways we can document them. X-ray maps is one of approach. An alternative approach is to use line scans. The beauty of line scans, particularly if I'm looking for sh to show trace differences or I don't have a lot of counts, it's a lot easier to build up statistics to show differences many times with a line scan than it is with an x-ray map. So to do a line scan here, we're going to just click on line scan. Again, notice the controls are basically the same. The acquisition for the image, same basic controls that we had before so we can update our image acquisition. Using the vector control here, I can pick that up simply by clicking on it, grabbing one end. I can change the orientation, grabbing in the middle. I can change the entire frame. I can then grab the other end and change the uh, position as well. So this is showing me that we're going to scan currently from the left side to the right side. And again, I can move this about for any location that I wish to set the scan on. And I see the zoomed up region down here from here. And again, as with all our frames, you can adjust the relationship. So if you want to zoom this up a little bit to uh, more precisely place your vector. Now, other readout you have is it shows you currently my default is we're going to take 100 sampling points along the vector. My distance at this point is about 2 microns. In a case like this, I know my x-ray spatial volume is about 1.5 microns on this sample. So I could enter in 1.5 and it tells me if I want to do edge to edge to edge, I would need 131 pixel points or sampling points. Or I can come in here and say I want to do 150 points and it tells me that my spatial uh, distance is going to be about 1.3 microns between those. And as I make my adjustments for my vectors, it, tell, it updates those readouts for me. So I can set it based on the x-ray range if I know it. I can set it based on the number of sampling points that I'm currently working on. All right, so with that, that's the vector I want to scan. Under Acquire, down arrow key, there's my menu. So I can do it based on precision, one to, uh, either 100,000 counts total, 300,000 counts, or a million counts total within the line profile. Manual, keep collecting until I tell you to stop, or for a certain amount of time. And re realize, again, it will always finish out the frame. So if it takes longer than 100 seconds to do a scan, it will wait, it'll s stop the scan after it finishes the entire frame. Automatic numbering of your data and then again where do you want the results to go at the end of the analysis. I can elect to uh, put it right into the report or I can save it to file if I wish. So with that now I can just start the acquisition. Now I haven't told it what elements to collect for and if I haven't done that it automatically does an auto ID for me. So here are my individual profiles located along the bottom here. Here's the overlay and here's the zoomed up region showing it. I can also look at the overall spectrum. So this is the overall spectrum along that vector. It's also showing me these colored regions as the ROIs. Now again, utilizing the periodic table tool, I can adjust those. So if I press the right mouse button on my iron, it will allow me to switch between the iron K alpha, the K beta, or the L line. So I can simply click on it, immediately updates, and shows me down here the uh, distribution based on the iron L line. Switch it back to the iron K line. The system will also allow me to adjust the full width half max or the range of the ROI. So I can go to a a bright uh, wider one which is roughly two times the full width half max medium is 1.2 which is considered usually the optimum and then now which is about one times the full width half max or anything in between I wish to make it so with that I can do that for any element 
I can obviously also change the color, the fall color that's up there. And if I want, again, utilizing the periodic table tool, I can turn off the ROIs. So I don't need to always see them if I have them already fixed. And I'm satisfied with that. Now, while we're collecting, I can switch the profiles over here. And let's say I want to know more about this area of the profile. So I can highlight that using the right mouse button. It highlights it both in the profile and on the image. And now it's put up another vector. So I'm going to turn off the overall. So that's the profile, the actual spectrum that composes that region of the profile. If I come over here, I can integrate this area. So you can see exactly how it changes from region to region simply by highlighting it. So I And I can save those as a new spectrum at any point in time if I wish. And I can switch back and forth between the scan area, the spectrum, and the profile. Once I'm satisfied with the data, I can stop the acquisition. I can then elect to put this into my report simply by saying add to report. So now I have the image, the overall image, and the profiles with the zoomed up area and one-to-one -one correspondence. You can also save these by simply saying save and you can either save all the data together or we can come in here and select to save the profiles as an Excel file. So I can come in here, select Excel, give it a name, LPA, save, and now when I go into my vector there, so I have mine currently set up to save it in Quantex user, which is the normal default, I rename mine uh, compact. EDX is the login under data and there it is LPA Excel so I can click on that and now I can view it as an Excel file. So there it gives me the position, the distance and each of the elements their total counts within that region or however I've saved it for each of the channels. X clears that out and now I have my profile data saved and again that can be brought in if you save that as an RTL file you can bring back all the data as uh, to be manipulated at a later time realize just like hypermaps we save all the elements whether or not you specified them so I can always change the element list later on 